I don't know how to say that I'm happy that this match was not at SummerSlam without it sounding really douchey. But yeah, I'm kinda happy we didn't get this match. I don't know what happened, but this was really rough to watch. I was honestly surprised. Now this episode of Mine and I Trot didn't hit the same as last week. It seemed like last week they finally figured it out. We got something really exciting and this week it was business as usual. But what was your favorite moment of Monday Night Raw? Maybe JD McDonough, McDonald's. You know, growing on Damien Priest. Maybe Piper Niven becoming a tag team champion. Maybe Shinsuke's promo in Japanese. Yeah. All of these are good, but for me personally, by far, the best, most shocking moment was when Goldberg made his return and confronted Rhea Ripley. I didn't see that coming. Dude, and then he jagged hammered Rhea. Say what you will, man. You didn't see that coming. I didn't think I was going to make this video because I really let myself go these past few days, man. <laughs> when it comes to eating, yeah boy, yeah boy know how to do it. You know, yeah, yeah boy know how to shove this mouth. Man, I feel like Hulk Hogan during his sex tape, man. I feel like a pig. Jesus Christ. But anyway, th there is some stuff to talk about when it comes to this episode of Raw. The show kicked off with the Judgment Day without Finn Balor. Priest and Ripley acknowledge things have been off as of late. Priest says they should have one last week and Finn should have one at SummerSlam, but they're not breaking up. Damien Priest is mad that Finn Balor is not here tonight, but Rhea Ripley calms him down. We see JD McDonald's and Damien says, I see you have a microphone, but I would be careful or something along those lines. Jay doesn't mean to interrupt or disrespect the greatest faction in the WWE right now. He just has a message from Finn Balor. You should focus on Cody and Sami Zayn. Rhea says, we don't take orders from anyone, especially from someone who's not in the judgment day. Dominic tries to talk, obviously got booed, I absolutely love this. You can go to the back and we will handle the business. Sami Zayn interferes, we got a brawl between Sami Zayn and JD McDonough, but the Judgment Day just stood and did absolutely nothing. It seems like the only man who likes JD McDonough is uh, Finn Balor. You know, they're not sold on the idea and I kind of feel like Damien Priest at the end of the show. I didn't like it at first, but it's kind of growing on me. Say what you will, the man is really fun in the ring. We got Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough and like I've said, he's really fun to watch. You know, I haven't seen a lot of him. I know he was big in NXT UK and he's a fan favorite, but I never really watched these secondary WWE shows to be honest with you guys. So I don't know a lot, but he's fun. He has a unique style. Finn Balor tried to help JD McDonough, but Sami Zayn still ended up winning. JD could and get the job done. It seems like Sammy is fine, which is great news. You know, that injury looks legit. A boner popping out of your elbow? Seem seems like it's not that serious, probably some muscle. Does look like a bone. Er. Chelsea Green is disappointed that she has to relinquish the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. She has ideas though. Why don't we have a competition, a talent show? We see Katana Chance and Caden Carter, and they got attacked by Piper Niven. I'm your partner. There you have it. Not the worst idea, you know? I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, that just doesn't make any sense. Who cares? It's a TV show. These two are very different characters and I believe they could have great chemistry. I think it can be hilarious, so uh, we'll see. Gunter talked about how Chad Gable earned a future championship title match on his journey to fulfill the legacy of the greatest intercontinental champion of all time, the Ring General has arrived to Winnipeg. He goes on and says he understands why people call this the armpit of Canada. Love these promos. A and your food sucks. A and your sports team? Boohoo! He achieved more in one year than Chad Gable achieved in his entire career. But then we saw the Alpha Academy, and it seems like Ludwig Kaiser is getting a lot of promo time, man. And I think he's doing good, I think he does have that potential. It's not that interesting to me as of right now, but I do see a lot of charisma and, uh, you know, just how different this guy is. They set up a match between Giovanni Vinci and Chad Gable, in which Chad Gable won, and Gunta is not happy. This is not how the night is going to end. So we got another match. Gunter versus Otis. Yeah, this was pretty fun. You know, I love how much time Alpha Academy are getting, and I love the fact that it's no longer Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders. It's not a comedy rivalry anymore. This is legit. Now, of course, as you can imagine, Gunter won. But right after it, Chad runs 
comes in with a German suplex. Dare I say, spot of the night. We see the Judgment Day backstage, Finn Balor and Damien Priest are arguing, but Rhea tells them to stop, this is what the people want, to see them crumble. People no longer fear them, they lost their killer instinct. We see JD McDonough and he apologizes to Finn Balor. Priest says this is Judgment Day's business and Finn told JD that they will catch up later. The Judgment Day then talked about Cody Rhodes and now they're on the same page. Is it me? Or Drew McIntyre is turning heel soon because my man is not into it anymore. He was buddy to buddy with Riddle back in the day. Not so much anymore because we saw Riddle and Drew McIntyre. Riddle wants a tag team partner and he asked Drew McIntyre but he never let him finish. Just typical annoying Matt Riddle right here and Drew McIntyre was not that into it but eventually he said we'll see. So we got the Viking Raiders versus Riddle and mystery partner and Drew McIntyre decided to come out. So we saw the match surprisingly really fun man. The Viking Raiders as much as I hate this gimmick I, I, I can't stand it. Valhalla, Valhalla, whatever that is. Don't like it. That's my issue with the tag team, but they're great workers, man. They're really fun to watch in the ring. So I'm pretty lost, man. I don't know what these guys need. Of course, they lost again. Drew McIntyre and Riddle picked up the W in a very surprisingly fun match. Then backstage, Riddle talks about tag team championships. Again, Drew McIntyre can't speak because Riddle won't shut up. We see the New Day and the New Day are offended. What makes you think you deserve these championship titles? They challenged them to a tag team match and Riddle accepted on you know, Drew's behalf. I do smell a heel turn. I think it's going to be pretty effective. Attacking Riddle, someone was like a puppy running around. He's loyal. You know, he really is like a dog. His TV character is so innocent. Maybe he's just high. I don't know. Drew McIntyre turning on him. I think that would be really effective because people would feel sorry for Riddle. And these are the best kind of heel turns, right? Then we saw Rhea Ripley versus Indy Hartwell, which I'm not so sure. I believe this is her debut main roster match. I could be totally wrong right here. The match was fine. She could be a great champion. Why are we not getting any legit rivalries? We do have this potential Rhea Ripley versus... uh. I almost said Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> uh, Raquel Gonz Raquel Rodriguez, I think she's now called. And I, I get it, two dominant women. But it almost feels like a side story. And for whatever reason, we, we didn't get the match yet. It's almost as if the WWE Women's World title is an afterthought. Michael Cole interviewed Shinsuke Nakamura. And Shinsuke answered in Japanese. So I don't have a lot to say, believe it or not. I do not speak Japanese. But then we got Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins was as nice as possible. You know, he wants to have a match against Shinsuke Nakamura. It seems like Shinsuke doesn't really have a problem with Seth Rollins. He just wants the world heavyweight championship. So Seth Rollins doesn't understand why did you have to kick me in the face. Seth Rollins says he's a fighting champion, name a date and I'll defend the championship. They shook hands but Seth Rollins got dropped again. Like I've said I know the match is going to be really really good, we've seen it before but in my opinion Shinsuke doesn't feel like a threat to Seth Rollins, not with the booking we've seen for the past few years. And I get it, the next paper is not a big one so uh, it's typical WWE, that's how wrestling works. But I hope after Seth Rollins defeats Shinsuke, we are going to get something a bit more serious because now it seems like Monday Night Raw's main focus is the Judgment Day, which I get it. You know, they're holding the briefcase. They're, they're pretty hot right now. I understand. But the World Heavyweight Championship doesn't feel like a world title yet. It just doesn't have that vibe to me right now. So we finally got to see Trish Stratus versus Becky Lynch and this was not a good match unfortunately. It was a pretty long match but we had so many botches which I can excuse. I, I get it man. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, my biggest problem was not necessarily botches itself but the way they kind of wrestled. Everything was really really slow, clunky. It just didn't work out and I don't know why. I don't want to be too harsh. I get it. You know, Trish Stratus is not an active competitor, so I understand. I, th I think it was mostly because of Trish. Maybe she just couldn't keep up with uh, Becky in this match. But yeah, this was this was pretty bad. Sometimes it was almost uncomfortable to watch, if I'm being honest. This match ends in a double countout, so the finish sucked as well. I hate to say it, man, but, but this match really sucked. <laughs> it really did. Finally, we got the main event. Cody Rhodes versus Finn Balor. Did feel like a bit of a filler, because it seems like Cody doesn't really have a rivalry right now. Of course, the main storyline right here is the Judgment Day. Will they break up? Damien Priest tried to help again and of course it backfired again, which looks cool and all, but it just keeps happening every week. 
you know, on Raw, on pay-per-views, do something. So Cody Rhodes wins the match, but after the match, we got a brawl. JD McDonough interfered and helped the Judgment Day, and it seems like Damian Priest finally respects the dude. No hugs or anything like that, but he had that look. Maybe this kid is up to something. He had that look. And the Judgment Day stood tall, which is exactly what they needed. And now since JD got involved, it seems like Damien Priest is going to understand that maybe we need this guy. Maybe he has something to offer. He's still not a part of the Judgment Day, but it's definitely getting there. Like I've said, I'm not too excited about it, but after seeing this guy in the ring, I, it's kind of growing on me. I'm okay with it, but it depends. Like, I, I think he could be a great addition to the Judgment Day, but I don't feel like he's a good replacement. I don't think he could replace Finn Balor. I don't think he could replace Dom I don't think he could replace Damien Priest. So we'll see what happens with that. Last week's highlight was definitely Miz and LA Knight. We didn't get much of it this week. So maybe that's another reason why this show is just kind of meh. Thank you for watching. Do it one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. Bye.